Hey y'all, welcome to Math with Mrs. Davis. Today we're going to talk about the volume of rectangular prisms, cylinders, and pyramids. Our goal is to be able to calculate the volume and or missing linear measurements to solve problems. So let's go ahead and start by talking about what is volume. Volume is the space inside a 3D object measured in cubic units. So this box that we have on the left, if I'm asking what the volume of that box is, I'm asking how much space is inside of it. I, how much could I pour into it? Like if I'm packing it, how much could I pack in there? What's the amount of space inside of it? Or if this pyramid on the right, if I'm asking about the volume of the pyramid, I'm asking how much space is inside the pyramid. Like if I wanted to fill it with sand, how much sand is gonna fit inside that pyramid? So another question to ask is, why are we measuring volume in cubic units? We could fill objects with anything we want. We could fill it with sand. Uh, we could fill it with pencils, feather, lead, bricks, donuts, cookies, marshmallows, whatever we wanted, right? But what's hard is when we want to communicate to people how much something holds in a way that they understand and is standard everywhere. Like if you went to Home Depot and you're trying to buy a box to pack and it says that it's got like six cubic feet versus six cubic marshmallows, that's kind of hard because are we talking little mini marshmallows or big marshmallows? So something that's standard across the board that we can all visualize. And so let's look at what a cubic unit is. A cubic unit is something formed by a cube that all of its side lengths are one inch. So a cubic unit is the amount of space occupied by just one of these cubes. So the space taken up right there, that's our cubic unit. Okay, so when we're talking about the volume then, we're asking how many of those cubes fit into something. So sometimes you could be talking about like a cubic inch or a cubic foot, a cubic yard, other things. But in general, it's going to be a cube where all of the side lengths are one of whatever you're measuring in. Inches, yards, feet, whatever it is. So in this example, it's a cubic inch. So let's ask, how could we find the volume of this rectangular prism? Well, I would start by counting how many blocks fit across on the bottom. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight blocks across and there's one, two, three blocks back. So this bottom row, I would do eight times three to figure out that there's 24 blocks on the bottom row. And I would stack those blocks all the way up till the box is filled. So how many times could I stack it up? Well, let's count how many blocks are in this row right here. This is already on the second row. I'm going to start at two then. So two, three, four, five, six. So it means as a height of six. So I'm going to multiply this by six to get that 24 times six is 144. So the volume is 124 inches cubed. So in general, with any rectangular prism, the volume is going to be the length times the width times the height. Or if you prefer, you can always say base times width times height. Does it matter as long as you're getting those three dimensions? And let's go ahead and use this page as our notes that we're going to take and fill out as we go through this video. So we're gonna talk about how to find each of these equations for volume. Let's go ahead and move on to cylinders. So let's think about cylinders a little bit. A cylinder is this shape on the right. You see these a lot of times with like paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls or pipes, anything that's like circular and then stretches. So what's the base of the shape? I'm gonna look at the bases, which this shape actually has two and notice this base is a circle. How many cubic blocks will fit on that base? If I draw a circle here and I want to ask how many squares are going to fit inside of it, well, notice if I put a square right here on the edge, 
part of it is outside of the circle. So only parts of it is inside. So what I'm really asking is what's the area of this circle? And if you remember, the formula for an area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared, where the radius is the point that goes from the center to any point on the edge. That's your radius. Whereas your diameter is a point that goes all the way across, passing through the center. That is your diameter. So if you're given your diameter, just cut it in half to find your radius. Now we need to ask, how many stacks of those blocks could we make? So if I put blocks all the way across the bottom of the cylinder, so it's filling it up, how many times could I stack those blocks until this whole cylinder was filled up with blocks? Because that's going to tell me how many blocks in total there are. That's what we did with the last rectangular prism, right? How many stacks is dependent on the height. And let's call this our height, how tall that cylinder is standing. So let's go ahead and see if we can write our formula for the volume of a cylinder. We said we found how many blocks fit on that base by finding pi times the radius squared. And then however many fit on the base, we're just going to multiply that times how many stacks we would have, which is dependent on the height. So that's our formula. Let's go ahead and update our page. So the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. Awesome. Let's move on to our final shape, which is pyramids. So let's start by thinking about pyramids. We should all be able to visualize a pyramid, right? Because we think pyramid, Egypt, that's pretty easy. So let's look at the shape of the base. The base is this shape down here, where if I lay it flat, it's got one shape. And that is a rectangle or a square. And unlike with the cylinders, this is pretty easy to figure out how many cubic blocks would fit on that base. All we have to do is do base times height, or if you prefer, length times width. That's not too bad. Here's where it gets tricky. How many stacks of those blocks can we make? If I stack cubes up here and they fit evenly, the first stack's gonna be perfect, and let's say it finishes there. So here's the end height for the first stack, right? And it goes all the way around. There's the first stack. Well, if I start to do my second stack, it's going to not go all the way up. Like, I'm not going to be able to put as many stacks or as many cubes on the second round, right? So if I do my second stack, it's going to go about here, but not as many fit there. And then again, the next stack, even fewer blocks. So each stack, there will be fewer blocks. And the question is, how many fewer blocks per stack? That's what we need to figure out. So... If you're in class, I'm going to do a demonstration. If you're not in class, please go watch this video YouTube. It's awesome. It's going to make so much sense and be really helpful because it's going to explain the relationship between a pyramid and a cube. And that is really how you would want to experiment is to figure out how many times could I fit this pyramid inside a cube? Because they have the same base. How many times will it fit in? So pause, come back, and if you are with me, you learned that a pyramid fits inside a cube three times. So that means we're going to take our formula for a rectangular prism and just divide it by three. So we're going to do one-third the length times the width times the height. Or you could write it like this, uh, length times width times height divided by three, you can always use base, width, height, whatever letters you prefer. It really doesn't matter. Let's do a couple examples. So example one, find the volume of a pyramid with a square base where the side length of the base is 6.6 .6 meters and the height of the pyramid is 10.2. I'm going to try to draw this for you. So if you ever want to practice drawing a pyramid, I recommend you draw like an L, a right angle, and then 
make the other two sides dotted because they're going to be as if they're in the background. Now pick a point up top and draw a straight line down to the front corner to the other two corners. And then the back corner is going to be a dotted line all the way down. And that's how I've created that three-dimensional pyramid looking shape. So it says it's a square base where the side length of the base is 6.6. .6. And since the square, all of the sides are 6.6. .6. Now the height of the pyramid is 10.2. Height is a tricky thing. Imagine you're setting this pyramid down and you're going to take its mug shot. What we want to know is how far up that wall does it go? How am I going to measure that? That height is going to be expressed by the line that comes straight down and forms a 90 degree angle with the base. So it's telling us that this height is 10.2 meters. And we know that our volume of a pyramid is going to be found by one third times the length of the width or the area of the base, which is length times width times height. So we're going to have one third times 6.6 .6 times 6.6 .6 times 10.2, which is going to give us 148.1 meters cubed. And that's your answer. Let's do another quick example. So let's say we have a cylinder who has a radius of 10 inches and a height of 20 inches. We want to know the volume. So if I draw my cylinder, I've got a circle here, a circle down here, it's connected. There's my cylinder. It has a radius of 10 inches, so it goes from the center to the edge, that's 10, and my height is 20. Recall that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. So you would just do pi times the radius squared, so 10 squared times the height, which is 20, which should give you approximately 6.283 or sorry, not point there, put the wrong decimal spot, 6,283.18, which will round to 6 point, or sorry, I did it again, 6,283.2. Kept wanting to put that decimal before the other two. All right, that is how you find the volume of those shapes. I hope you always remember how to find those volume formulas and remember where they come from. And if you have any questions, let me know. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.